So today is an interesting day because I'm going traveling up to San Francisco for a summit with MediaTek. And uh, I figured it'd be really interesting to see what a day in a life would look like using the Google Pixel 7 Pro as I'm traveling around. And I think that's really unique because it's something different than a typical day in the life. I get to check out Wi-Fi tethering on the go, using my passes for my flights, calling on Ubers and different things like that. So I'm just as curious as you are and figuring out how well it performs. So come join me. I got a little bit more packing to do. We've been uh, setting up here for some audio test stuff in the studio, so it's actually kind of crazy how I had to leave this this way. But uh, we're packing up here. I have this like new luggage here that uh, July sent out to me, which is pretty cool. I love matte white and black, as you can probably tell. But here's the cool part. They have a little battery backup in here so you can charge your stuff. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. Thanks for sending this out, July. Not sponsored, but <laughs> appreciate it. And I just got my notification here about my lift that's coming shortly and my boarding pass. So that's pretty cool. This has a Google wallet in there. So I have my boarding pass built into my phone. Makes it really easy. And there's Ruby. Hi, Ruby girl. I love you. You're so cute. <laughs> Since I'm on the go, I'm going to put it in a case. This moment case here is pretty nice. It has a little MagSafe magnet in there so you can mount it on different things. But uh, I just like how slim it is. It's pretty nice. I'm also going to download a bunch of YouTube videos onto my phone so that I can watch it while on the plane and not have to worry about having an internet connection. And of course, I have to say goodbye to my sweet boy, Cloud. Here's Ruby. I'm leaving. I'm leaving for a few days, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Take care. So I just look at my boarding pass and I found out that I'm flying first class, which is pretty cool. I've always flown uh, economy, so that'll be kind of interesting to see what's different. I'm gonna turn on the hotspot here. Let's see if our settings are for this. And then we're gonna turn on NordVPN because that's what you should do. There it is. And we're just gonna quick connect. Boom. It's only been like two hours and we're down to 72%. Thank you. One of the main things that I notice about first class is that it really just has more legroom and more space overall. It's not anything super fancy, surprisingly. It's kind of nice to get in and off first. They also give you drinks in a fancier glass and stuff again. And uh, well, your usual snacks here. So here's a stoop waffle. I've actually never had one of these before, but it was actually kind of nice. And then I took a few shots at the window. So you have your ultra wide, your one X, your two X, your 5X and your 10X, which is a crop of that 5X telephoto lens. And then I had the crazy idea that maybe I should do an ANC test for one of my crazy audio comparisons where I test the active noise cancellation on an actual plane. This flight was only an hour and 45 minutes, so I probably got this done in maybe about 30 minutes. It looked crazy. There are a ton of cables and wires, and it probably looked like I was constructing a bomb, so I'm glad I managed to get away with this. All right, we just landed it was pretty smooth we are now at 47 percent for the battery we've only been active for what, like four hours so it's not exactly all that great but gotta book a lift and uh, we'll be at the hotel soon over a hundred dollars for a ride this is the second time that i've been able to see the golden gate bridge and it was pretty awesome it looks gorgeous of course you gotta get a few pictures of it just to capture the moment it's pretty iconic and this was a two and a half hour ride, so I decided to download an entire episode and watch Andor. And then we made it out to Sonoma, which is absolutely gorgeous. There are grape fields to make wine. And then we arrived at the resort over here. It is gorgeous. Check out this amazing fountain and this view. It was bougie. Hello there. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Nice to see you guys again. <laughs> Check out this place. This is crazy. Your normal entrance and stuff. But wow, look at this fancy bathroom. Hi there. This is a big old meter. 
and then you have a big old king. And double king size bed is what they said, holy cow. And all this space for sitting down and working. This place is sweet. There's even a balcony to look over to everything. Wow. So you're probably wondering why I'm over here traveling with all this fancy hotel stuff. It's because I'm out for this summit by this company called MediaTek. They uh, make processors for a ton of Internet of Things products. So if you've ever used like an Alexa or honestly like most TVs and stuff like that, there's probably a MediaTek processor in there. And then there's a ton of smartphones overseas, so not in the US, that use MediaTek processors. They're really given like some of the competitions some run for their money. So I wish they were over here in the United States. It'd be kind of amazing if the Pixel had a MediaTek processor in it. They just announced their Dimensity 9200 and it's ridiculous. The GPU is just insane. It has ray tracing in it and it's more efficient. And those are all different things that uh, I think the Pixel could use. Oh, speaking of, there's the battery life right now. We're around 11%. Let's go unpack and then uh, go hang out with some people. Editor Brandon here. We'll have to finish out the video here. I took a few photos and videos at a dinner that I went to after this. Still, my phone didn't back up any of that because it hit 3% of battery life a little after 7 p.m. and then died around 7.15 p.m. Bummer. You may think, just charge it. It'll upload the photos and videos after that. Well, that's what I was hoping to do. but this happened. After plugging it into the charger, it went to the bootloader and every single option would cycle back to this screen. There are people from XDA, 9to5Google, and other creators here, and we couldn't recover it. It was bricked. This was unexpected as I planned to film a few videos on this trip. I just used it normally. No betas, no mods, and I didn't even have the developer mode enabled. Apparently using the phone all the way to 0% battery and bricking has been an issue for some people for years. I don't know how true that is, but it's what some of you said on Twitter. Thankfully, since I am a part of Team Pixel, Google did send me a replacement, which I now have, thanks for the gift from Google, and I totally understand I'm really privileged here. Still, this happening really isn't something that should ever happen and is not okay. They're taking this device back to investigate, so hopefully this will fix things in the future for all of us. Outside of this issue, I was slightly disappointed in the battery life. Still, I was pushing it a lot harder than usual. On my trip back, I used my backup phone, the iPhone, to travel and watch some shows. It did manage to last a couple hours longer, but it also lost way more battery than a typical day. So outside of this rare occurrence of it bricking, I still like the Pixel 7 Pro. If you're traveling with the Pixel 7 Pro, take advantage of the time to charge it. The biggest takeaway from this trip is to bring a backup phone just in case, even if you use an iPhone. You never know what could happen. So if you'd like to pick up the Pixel 7 Pro or see the gear I used for this trip or what was in my tech backpack, check out the links in the description next to the link to this video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the only VPN that I use because it is super easy to use. You just connect to it with one click. You can easily make yourself look like you're anywhere else in the world if you need to. So you can watch those shows that may not be as easy to watch wherever you're located. But NordVPN makes a ton of sense when you're traveling. When I connect to the Wi-Fi at an airport, on an airplane, or in a hotel, it's not all that secure. So if you're logging into things like your bank account or anything else that's really personal and important like that, you want to have a VPN. A VPN helps you protect your information so anybody who may be snooping on the network cannot see what you're actually surfing or looking at. As you saw when I was at the airport, I use NordVPN out of habit. That's just something I naturally do and it's something that everyone else should do. It's important. Right now, if you go to NordVPN, vpn.com slash tech today or use the link down below in the description you'll get four months free of nordvpn also when you're traveling having the most speed possible is really important and based upon studies nordvpn is the fastest vpn out there and in my experience trying a whole bunch of different options i would agree so go ahead and check that out and thanks so much to nordvpn for sponsoring this portion of the video thank you to MediaTek for providing the accommodations for this trip to their MediaTek executive summit in sonoma california they did not sponsor this video and no one had any review or copy approval before seeing it you're watching this at the same time as them. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.